Chapter 4 The Meaning of the Ten Suchlikes The ten suchlikes, which are like Indira's net, are integrated into the ten realms of existence, yet are distinct. The threefold truth is like a crystal, in which the three thousand realms are contained and colorfully reflected. This is the objective realm illumined by the Tathagata's true wisdom, the ultimate goal of the jewel vehicle in the Lotus Sutra. From the first aspiration to the stage just before Buddhahood, it is necessary to rely on this teaching of the Lotus Sutra and not on any other way. This is the meaning of, quote, arousing an understanding of subtle objective reality, close quote. There are three parts to interpreting this meaning. A. Introduction Question. What are the ten such likes? Answer. The chapter Expedient Means in the Lotus Sutra lists such like appearance, such like nature, such like essence, such like power, such like activity, such like causes, such like conditions, such like results, such like retribution, and such like beginning and end being ultimately the same. B. Interpretation Question. Why are these called such like appearance and so forth to such like beginning and end being ultimately the same? Answer. There is a general interpretation of their common features and a detailed interpretation of their distinct features. The general interpretation is that appearance refers to distinctions that are made in perceiving outer forms. Therefore, it is called appearance. Nature refers to that which is inside oneself and does not change. Therefore, it is called nature. That which is the central quality of something is the essence. Power is the ability to influence. Activity refers to the activity of construction. Causes refers to direct causes. Conditions refers to auxiliary causes. Results refers to direct results. Retribution refers to the indirect results of retribution. Beginning refers to the first such like of appearance and refers to the last such like of retribution and ultimately the same refers to their integration. Question. Do these ten such likes have numerous meanings? Answer. They have shared and distinct meanings. Question. What are they? Answer. The shared meaning is that they all exist in one thought. The distinct meaning is that they are divided according to material and mental categories. Question. What thoughts are meant by saying that they all exist in one thought? Answer. This refers to a single thought of an ordinary person. Question. What about dividing them according to material and mental categories? Answer. Appearance and retribution exist only in the material category. Nature, causes, and results exist only in the mental category. Essence, power, activity, and conditions span both the material and mental categories. Beginning and end, both the same, should be known in accordance with this. What is the essence of these ten such likes? Answer. The causes and effects of the ten Dharma realms are its essence. Question. What are the ten Dharma realms? Answer. 1. The Dharma realm of hell. 2. That of beasts. 3. That of hungry spirits. 4. That of asuras. 5. That of human beings. 6. That of gods. 7. That of shravakas. 8. That of pratyeka buddhas. 9. That of bodhisattvas. And 10. The Dharma realm of the Buddha. Question. Do these ten Dharma realms include ten such likes? Answer. Each and every realm contains the ten such likes. Question. If so, how many are causes and how many are results? Answer. The first seven are causes, the next two are results, and the last one is both cause and result. Question. What is the meaning of the distinct interpretation? Answer. This is a classification into four parts according to similar tendencies. Question. What are the four categories? Answer. 
One, the four evil destinies. Two, human beings and gods. Three, the two vehicles. And four, bodhisattvas and buddhas. Question. What are the ten suchlikes for the category of the four evil destinies? Answer. The interpretations are exceedingly vast and cannot be exhausted. Now, I shall abbreviate the complex renditions and present a simple summary. The four evil destinies have as their appearance the manifestation of suffering. Their nature is to be destined to accumulate evil. Their essence is to have their minds and bodies pounded and broken. Their power is to climb on swords and enter cauldrons of boiling metal in pursuit of their desires. Their activity is to do the ten immoral deeds. Their causes are the arousing of evil and defile karma. Their conditions are passion, attachment, and so forth. Their results are the fruit of evil habits. Their retribution is further rebirth in the three evil destinies. The beginning and end are the same in that they all consist of ignorance. Question. How about the ten such likes of human beings and gods? Answer. The appearance of human beings and gods is that of manifesting pleasure. Their nature is to be destined to accumulate goodness. Their essence is to rise above their bodies and minds. Their power is to experience pleasure. Their activity is to keep the five precepts and do the ten good deeds. Their causes are the pure white karma of good deeds. Their conditions are good passions and attachments. Their results are the fruit of good habits. Their retribution is to be human beings or gods. They are the same in that the existence of the beginning through the end is merely that of having conventional names. Question. How about the ten such likes of the two vehicles? Answer. The ten such likes of these realms are explained with reference to true non-defilement. Their appearance manifests nirvana. Their nature is neither white nor black, good nor evil. Their essence is the fivefold dharma body endowed with the virtues of morality, concentration, wisdom, liberation, and the knowledge insight of liberation. Their power is the ability to move about in or transcend this world. Their activity is to strive diligently. Their causes are those of undefiled correct wisdom. Their conditions are the practices that are conducive to the path. Their results are the fourfold fruit of stream winner to our hot. Those of the two vehicles have no retribution. Question. Why is the arousing of the truth considered the result, while there is no discussion of retribution? Answer. A condition of non-defilement is aroused, and this direct cause is rewarded by the attainment of a similar result. The condition of non-defilement has destroyed the causes for further rebirth, and so further rebirth does not occur. Therefore it is said that there is no retribution. Question. If so, how do you explain that the first three fruits of stream winner and so forth do have retribution? Answer. A residue of conceptual delusions still remains to be severed. Delusions remain for seven lifetimes. Some have one or more rebirth. Others are born in the realm of form. This is not retribution from the condition of non-defilement. Question. Do you say that there is no retribution from the perspective of the Mahayana or the Hinayana? Answer. This is Hinayana. Question. How about the perspective of the Mahayana? Answer. From the perspective of the Mahayana, this condition of non-defilement still contains defilements. Question. Why do you say that there are still defilements? Answer. Although it is said to be lacking in defilements from the perspective of the Hinayana, from the perspective of the Mahayana, this non-defilement is a cause, and ignorance a condition, for rebirth in this world of inconceivable transformations. Therefore, there are still retributions.